all right guys welcome to a brand new two stupid gamers video i'm nanners and today we got an unboxing mini why is it a mini because it's just me today however it is a pretty big unboxing to get into so i don't want to waste any more time i am stoked for this one i'm going to show you right now what it is that we're going to be unboxing here today in this video so i have in front of me the yeast 9 monstrum nox limited edition nice recently put this out um they helped localize this game so that non-japanese western gamers could finally get their hands on it and because i'm such a huge yeast fan you would know this because this is like the third unboxing i think if anybody want to fact check that we got calcutta we had eight I'm a huge fan. I had to go out of my way and get this one too. I've basically been waiting this for this game for over like a year. And you know what? I'm not going to make you guys wait anymore. We're just going to unbox. First off, you'll notice that they have a very nice sleeve on the outside. It's kind of like, it's kind of like translucent to some, uh, some degree. There's a part that is slashed open with like damage to it. And then there's part that's obviously a prison. So... I don't really know too much about this game just yet, but obviously kind of like a uh, prison theme. On the one side you have a character, so it kind of looks like either she's in jail or she's behind some kind of damaged wall. Or on the flip side, you have a bunch of different characters that kind of line up with the prison bars. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to set this over side over here. And then we have, of course, what is inside this box. First and foremost, we're going to start with the game itself because where else where else would you start with? Very nice artwork on the front. I pointed this out earlier, but I really like how the cover art for this game has like good contrast on the on the on the side of like the the blues and the reds. It's definitely a very pretty art cover. And as I said, and you guys may be able to see this, but at the top, it says the packed edition. So this is the packed edition. So let's actually open this one up. Uh, just to kind of see what's on the inside. Now, Falcom Collector's Editions tend to give you some really cool stuff. So right off the bat, we have not the game, but we actually have a CD. A little CD. Uh, it's little CD sampler. Uh, Melodies of the Macabre. Uh, track 1, Decision. Track 2, Lacrim Lacrima Crisis. Track 3, Aprilis, Track 4, Dreaming in the Grimwald, and Track 5, Feel Force. So what's really cool is that I see that there's a... I, spoiler alert, there's another CD in here. What Falcom tends to do is they give you like a couple of a couple of little uh, soundtrack CDs. So they always go the extra mile. And then of course what you have on the back, this is a cool multi-disc case. You have the game itself, obviously really important. I also see something on the front where the cover is. So I'm going to open up that real quick. Let's see what we got in here. A uh, little bit of paperwork, as we like to call it on TSG. So we got Monstrum Memoirs. I guess this is the instruction manual or something like that. That's kind of what it appears to be at first value, at first glance. Uh, we got a little, we have a little advertisement for Nisa. Uh, there's some cool yeast merch. You could go check it out if you want to get it. Uh, I really like the hoodie. The white hoodie is so badass. And I think I'm going to get it for myself at some point. Hopefully they still sell them. It looks like there's no DLC that came with this. So that's kind of interesting. Usually a collector's edition will come with DLC. Uh, but not in this case. Warning, this book contains spoilers. Yes. Okay, so at the risk of not spoiling myself, I'm not going to look too, too far into this. But yeah, this is just basically an insert full of some character information that's kind of what it is it's very nice has a nice finish to it and also what's worth noting too is that like a lot of these collector's editions and i really like when they do this you get a reversible sleeve so on the front we have that cover that i was just complimenting a moment ago and on the back side we have uh this which is also pretty cool again decent amount of color to it a lot of gr instead of a lot of blue there's a lot of green and on the back side you don't get all of the information that you usually do but you have a picture of this mysterious character who i'm assuming is very important to the story okay so that out of the way i'm just gonna put that to the side next we have 
Uh, what appears to be keychain sets. Cool. So we got some keychain sets, and that's pretty neat. Again, I don't really know too much about what's going on here. It just says Balduk's most wanted keychain set. What is Balduk? I don't know. I'll have to find out. Guys, I'm going to be so stoked to actually get through this game and be able to talk more about it. Maybe we'll even do an uh, episode about it. Who knows? Who knows? Only time will tell. I'm not really like a big keychain guy. I got I have like a couple of them, but it's not really for me for the most part. Still, it is a pretty cool addition. And the only thing I will say, though, is that there appear to be six, six or seven characters on the box. If you like look around the box, you'll see that there's about seven characters that, you know, since they're on the box, they're probably really important to the story. And yet we only got three keychains. So I was kind of expecting were they going to do keychains for all of them? I, I guess we didn't get that. Um, also, but then again, on the other side, I don't ever feel like I need more than one keychain. <laughs> I think I'm good. But anyway, this is a pretty cool, this is a pretty, little pretty cool accessory set. Uh, keychains if you're into that. All right, and on to the next thing. We have uh, a wanted poster. What? What is this? A wanted poster? Well, it's definitely not a poster because it's kind of it's kind of small for a poster. We have a bunch of cards. So essentially, you have cards of who I'm assuming are all the again those the characters on the box, the main characters, Adel, the Red, Kristen, classic, obvious, gotta go with that one, the Crimson King, in the Court of the Crimson, the Hawk, which is a very very interesting haircut, kind of like the one side, the Doll. As the next character i'm assuming again these are all really important uh members of the stories you got the white cat uh it had definitely had these cards definitely have like a like a nice finish to them they feel they really feel like they're old they even kind of have like a stink to them like a like almost like a library book or an envelope or something i'm gonna be honest i don't really know what i'm gonna do with this um maybe maybe i could take these cards and kind of tack them up onto the wall or something like that but i honestly i'm not too sure what to do with these they're definitely cool you get a little description uh you have some stuff about the crimes where they've been last seen and then kind of like a cautionary advisory nothing else on the back but yeah, it's it, it's it's neat it's not impressive but it's pretty cool all right let's see what's next Guys, what would the Yeast series be without music? Yeah, I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan of the Yeast series. I have been for a really long time, and it one of the things that everyone will tell you about that is, that is awesome about this series is the soundtrack. I haven't heard this just yet. I haven't been listening, been paying attention. Usually when, I, when a new game I really like is coming out, I try to do as little as I can looking into it. I definitely did not want to have the soundtrack spoiled for me. So I can't really comment about any of that stuff just yet. However, again, Yeast always knocks it out of the park with these soundtracks. If you like neoclassical music, if you, or excuse me, if you like classical music and you like metal, well then Yeast is basically neoclassical metal. Uh, sometimes they call it symphonic metal, but I mean, realistically, it's like the same thing or, uh, Yeesh, my guitar teacher might be rolling over right now thinking, well, I taught you better. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's good music. It's really good music. So it's pretty cool. And once again, they didn't just give us one CD. Falcom tends to give you more than one CD. Really just emphasizing how important the how important the music is in, in this series. You know, you're out there, you're killing a bunch of cool enemies, roaming the plains, and then uh, all the while, there's just a jamming soundtrack of metal and classic, classical orchestrated type pieces. You gotta love it. You absolutely have to love it. I feel like one day I gotta, I gotta get together and just make a mixtape of all the, of all the best songs in the Yeast series. I'm not gonna go over the full track list, but you do get 15 songs, which is pretty cool. And it doesn't seem like there's any repeats, which is nice. And then obviously on the inside you have you know the cd you have all sorts of stuff let me just open that up all right there's just the cd again really 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 nice artwork front and back uh regardless I, I i would just say that you know if you haven't checked out yeast 
Maybe you want to check out the music first, and then uh, see if that'll get you into the into the games. Cause I tell you, they make a hell of a soundtrack. <laughs> So in total, we get about 20, 20 songs with this limited edition. This being one of one of the sources of that, uh, can't complain whatsoever. I'm definitely gonna throw that onto my computer and my phone and just take it take it with me on the go. All right. Well, we have in a very weird kind of alignment. There's a little box of a figure, but then you also get it on this kind of weird thing. There's this is hollow. There's nothing to it, but they just kind of kept it in like this. It's almost like Tetris. But yeah, we get a Crimson King chibi figure. Uh, warning, choking hazard. I'm gonna just open this up. Oh, okay. I thought it was gonna be slick and just... Cut it off, but I guess not. Oh, careful, I wanna break the box. Not that there's any resale value, but... Boom. As a lot of the stuff indicates for me. Cool. So this is kind of cool for me because this is the second yeast figure that I have. Uh, no, excuse me. This is the fourth yeast figure that I have. But we did a different yeast unboxing where Zero got me a bunch of yeast figures that he found in an antique store of all places. So I think this is kind of cool. Now I get to add to my yeast figure collection. Uh, just like with just like with keychains, I'm not like a big figure guy, but I mean I cannot deny having a yeast related figure is pretty awesome. And you know what? Another thing. Spoiler for that video. I never got to have an add-all, so I have an add-all figure right here. That's pretty cool. Because in that video, we were unboxing um, figure sets that were randomized characters, and you had a one in six chance of getting a certain character, one of which was add-all. But this one, any collector's edition that you get for Yeast Monstrum uh, will come with this little guy, and it looks really nice. Uh, detail seems to be all there he's got this kind of like blank expression on his face like oh man I'm, i feel like i'm about to get lost i feel like i'm about to capsize on a ship or get amnesia wash up on the shore so that's pretty cool that's gonna make a nice little paperweight desktop topper uh definitely appreciate something like this all right we're getting close to the end of this unboxing we only got a couple more things to go and now we have the Yeast Monstrum Nox Nails in the Coffin. The Art of Yeast 9 Monstrum Nox. So, essentially a little art book. Again, what collector's edition would not would be complete without some form of like an art book or some way, some way to uh, emphasize the art. I've already had a book similar like this because in the past we've gotten Adol's journal and sometimes they do a book like a journal that basically just features artwork, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to just add this to my collection. I probably have about three, two or three of these kinds of little art books. It's really neat. Again, I have to point out the contrast on this shot right here is awesome. I'm looking at my second monitor and this looks way better and much more saturated than anything else in the shot, <laughs> which at, on the one hand, I kind of don't like that that's happening. But on the other hand, it's like, wow, well, they, they, uh, they did their homework with the graphic design for this. So you got, you know, you have stuff about uh the characters we got Adol, we got dogi Adol, who appears to show up a couple times with not red hair interesting that's usually not the case now uh i'm not gonna venture too far into this we do have all of the characters uh that we saw at the um on the outside of the box and they were on the posters i don't want to get into the spoilers of it is what it is but yeah uh very nice to get these kinds of art books uh oh it looks like there's a repeat oh that's crazy it looks like there's a repeat they got krisha pendleton and they got krisha pendleton the second daughter of the esteemed and affluent pendleton family i'm not going to say any more for spoiler purposes but they actually have it twice that seems like a misprint wow okay i've definitely not seen anything like that before <laughs> um but yeah so we got we got all these different characters and i don't want to like, I just can't help but turn these pages, even though I really don't want to. Illustrations. Without a doubt, you guys can see that in this game, there is a huge prison element uh, to the story. It obviously plays an integral part to the themes of this game. I can't comment on that yet because I haven't played it, and I'm sure I'll find out more all about it once I start my full playthrough of this game. 
I always say that like, okay, after I play the game because of spoiler reasons, then one day I'll just pick up the book out of my collector's edition and I'll read through it. But I never do that. So what I'm actually going to try to do this time around, I'm going to play this game and finish it. And then afterwards, I'll just kind of read this thing and just actually make an effort to look through it as opposed to just letting it sit there. But yeah, I always like when they include stuff like this. Uh, these little art books are a personal favorite of mine to find in collector's edition. So the Yeast art book, Nails in the Coffin, very cool edition, definitely welcome. And guys, now we have our last piece. So let me just, uh, I'm gonna have to get all the way to the bottom of this box because it kind of tipped over. And we have Yeast 9 prequel, Lost Sword. This appears to be well i mean I, I would assume that it's kind of exactly what it says uh they give you a nice little map the europe region prologue on the road to to ispani what i think this is i could be wrong but what i think this is is just that just as it says it's a prequel it's a nice it's basically just a little book it's a tiny little book you don't have any pictures too much outside of the map that i was mentioning earlier it's gonna sound weird to say, but that's actually pretty cool. This is a lore book. That's what this is. So what I imagine is that before starting this up, maybe Falcon was thinking, okay, why don't we give them like a couple of light pages of reading to do just so they can get prepared for the beginning of this game. And you know what? I've never seen this in a collector's edition that I had personally. This is cool. I like this. I'm for this. And I'm down to read something like this. So this lore book kind of reminds me of when I got the Yeast 8 Collector's Edition because that that package also had something that I found really surprising and was not expecting, and that was the bookends. So you got these two little cool bookends in that one, and here they came came out and surprised us with a, a, lo a little lore book. So yeah, guys, uh, that was basically it. This is the Yeast 9 Monstrum Nox Limited Edition that Nice recently just put out uh, localized to the west so finally people like me could buy it. There was a bunch of cool stuff in here. There were some things that I liked. There's some things that I was not feeling too much if I have to be completely honest. And it was definitely weird that one of the books had kind of like a misprint what I believe. Uh, but that being said it is a cool pack. Uh, the lore book was a pleasant surprise and I frankly want to see more of that in other kinds of collector's editions that I buy and the cheap the cheapy figure is pretty cool it's a neat little package for what i hope to be a very good game you can find this at your local stores basically is available everywhere now so we've been waiting we've been waiting for it to get localized for like a year but it's finally out i'm excited for it uh i highly recommend it i don't know if this is going to be the type of game that you can just pick up and play without having to play the any of the other ones because i didn't play it yet but yeah, this is going to be a collector's edition that I'm going to recommend to any Yeast fan, regardless of what the game ends up being like, because again, I, I don't know, I can't make that recommendation at the time of this video. Also, guys, if you wanted to check out real quick, a cool resource for your all your Yeast needs, whether it be guides, strategy guides, lore, explanations for things you didn't quite understand, uh, go check out Digital Amelis. It's a really cool website. And it's the number one use resource on the internet. It is totally fan driven. I definitely recommend you check them out. I'll throw a link into the description. And that's gonna do it for today's video. Once again, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, what did you think? Did you like any of this stuff? Did the lore book kind of surprise you? Have you ever had a lore book in any other collector's edition? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to drop a follow and a like and a comment and a favorite and a five star rating and all that stuff. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, yeah, we'll see you on for another Two Stupid Gamers video hopefully soon.